This is one of the best ways to generate AI art today. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? In this video, I want to preach to you. I want to convince you of something. And that something is to give ComfyUI a shot. Don't click away right now, because in this video, I've packed a lot of reasons on why you should give it a shot. One of these reasons is because ComfyUI is more easy on your resources. So if you have an older computer, this might be the perfect solution for you. And of course, another reason is because it is completely portable and self-contained. So it is very easy to install. Let's get started with this video. Let's start by a workflow that I built for you. It only uses three different nodes to create all of the text to image rendering, a high res upscale, and after that, even an image shot sharpening. And this is super easy to understand. If you come from automatic 1111, you should feel very at home with this. Another benefit of this is it works very well with 1.5 models, but then also with SDXL models that have the refiner baked into the model, which most of the community models have. The reason why this build looks so simple is because it is using custom nodes built by the community. And here we actually have the next benefit of ComViewI. So ComViewI, you can understand like an open sandbox and anybody out there, including you, can create custom nodes for it. Now, this has two benefits. First of all, you can create nodes exactly like you need them so that they feel good to you. But secondly, because everybody out there in community can create these nodes and the community is very active, it means that new technology for AI is often adapted very quickly and much faster than with other UIs. For example, with Automatic 11.11, often the UI itself and the integration of new technology is a little bit behind the state of the art. And because of that, extensions also have to be behind in what they can do. In ComfyUI, there is a super easy way to get these custom nodes installed, and that is the manager. So over here on the right side, you can see I have a button that says manager. I click on that, and here's install custom nodes. And in there, I have a very long list. I click on install. It's installing that. I can also update it, I can disable it, I can uninstall it all from this part. Now, this itself is also an extension and it's very, very easy to install that. So when you go to the GitHub page for the ComfyUI manager, you simply scroll down to the installation here. It says you need to go to the custom notes. So inside of your ComfyUI Windows portable folder, you go into the ComfyUI folder in there, you go to the custom nodes and then up here in the address bar, you type CMD and hit enter. This starts your command window where you are already in the right location. Go back to the ComfyUI manager page and you want to copy this line here, git clone and then the web address of the ComfyUI manager. Copy that into the command window, hit enter and let it finish download. Afterwards, you simply go into the base folder of ComfyUI Windows Portable and you click the Run NVIDIA GPU BAT to start ComfyUI. This will do some additional installs and maybe also downloads. And after that, you have the manager. With that, you have already the by far most important extension for ComfyUI. Now I'm going to give you some advices of what to download next. So here are several packs that are very helpful to you and are used in most of the other workflows you can download from the internet. One is the ComfyUI Impact Pack. The next one is the efficiency notes for ComfyUI. Then there is also the WAS note suit. And one thing that is one of my favorites is the ultimate SD upscaler, which will upscale your images while tiling them at the same time. So this is very efficient and also works for slower GPUs. For each of them, you simply click on the install button on the right side. And then after the install has finished, you restart ComfyUI to also do additional installs and downloads required. Now that you are ready to go, let me show you something that is pretty amazing. Here I have that workflow text to image I showed you before, but here I have another workflow. This is using a different model for SDXL, but basically the same build. And here I have yet 
another workflow. This is doing image to image rendering and model switching in between, which means I have two models loaded at the same time. And here is another build. This is from a member of my community also doing SDXL rendering, but in a more advanced way. Now, as you can see, I can run all of them in different browser tabs at the same time. And what you can also see, especially with this here, and also with that is the complete workflow. Everything you want to do to the AI image is happening inside of that canvas. So there is no jumping between tabs. Everything is happening right now. You can move everything around. You can rebuild everything as you want. And that is the huge benefit with this. I can build the UI as I need it for my artistic project. And I can experiment with different builds in different tabs of my window. Imagine you don't have to change any settings. You don't have to go through tabs. You don't have to go back and forward all the time. You just switch to another tab and then you can test out different builds, different workflows, different ways to go about that. That's pretty amazing. Now, if you don't know what model switching is, let me show you real quick. So what I do here is I am rendering an image here with ref animated. So you can see here, this is a classic ref animated style. Looks really beautiful, but I want to have this kind of composition and the colors and everything, but I want to have it photorealistic. So up here for my second sampler, I am using for this epic realism and you can see down here, when I go to this image, I have the exact same composition and everything, but now it is photorealistic. You see, even the haircut is the same. How amazing is that? Now, of course, over here, I'm doing my ultra upscale with the tiled upscaler. And here I have my high resolution version for that. That is even sharpened because I decided to put a sharpening note down here. Now, here's the crazy thing. All of that is saved inside of the metadata of every single image that you render. The complete process of whatever you're doing, no matter how complex that process is. Of course, I hear you say automatic 1111 is also saving the metadata in the image with all of the steps and information and settings you did in the extensions. That is true, but it's only true for the last thing you did with that image. So for example, if you send the image from text to image to image to image and then use another model like the model switching I just did. That kind of thing is not saved in the metadata, but it gets even better. Not only is your complete workflow saved inside of every image, you can have extensive notes on what you did, why you did it, links to videos or resources where you got it from, all of that inside of the workflow with every single image. That is just mind blowing. On top of that, the community is super active about sharing their workflows and helping you understand understand what is going on. One of the very active people here who's also part of my community is Akatsuzi and she has these links here. Also, thank you for your support for creating this video. So here you have templates for SD 1.5 with rising complexity. So you can see we have here one that is a bit simpler. She uses the individual nodes rather than these kind of compacted nodes I show you before. So you get an actual understanding of what is going on and then these are becoming more and more complex and she has a flow from the left to the right so you can go through that step by step to learn from her builds to understand how to work more efficient and creative with ComfUI. Here she has the same thing these builds are for SDXL in that case. Again you can see here there is a simple workflow intermediate and then also advanced with a flow from left to right so you can understand what is going on. Now let's talk a little bit about artistic freedom and convenience. In Automatic 11.11, the UI is built in a fixed way. You can't really change how it works. But in ConfUI, if you think something should be different or it should run in a different order or you want to add something to the process, you can simply do that. You are absolutely free in how you work with it and what steps follow on other steps. So here I want to show you two examples of that. So before I showed you this build that goes from ref animated to epic realism. And of course, the thing I did here is that I just added 
a second sampler into the process to just enable me to do that. Another thing that I told you before is that I added some image sharpening down here because I thought, well, the output of the image is pretty cool. However, I want it to be a little bit more sharper, crisper, more detailed. So with the image sharpening down here, I can simply interject that and I can put that wherever I want in the process. So for me, I decided that the image sharpening is happening after the upscaling is done, but I could just as well also sharpen the image before the upscaling is happening. Of course, with the same logic, you can add nodes anywhere in the process for any kind of reason, just in the way you want to do things and just in the way they give you the best results. And this is the ultimate artistic freedom, but also gives you full control and a lot of ways and possibilities to experiment with AI. So this is a complete new universe that you can dive into. Now, here's another point that I want to address. Some people say that ComfyUI, because of all these cables, is just too complex and it's hard to understand how to use that. And yes, that might be true in the beginning, because certainly there's a bit of a more steep learning curve for that. However, I can guarantee you that most of the time you will find a workflow that works best for you and then use that 80 to 90 percent of the time and ComfyUI is only as complex as you make it yourself because you build these workflows. So if you want to use a simple workflow, you're absolutely free to do that. And with these efficiency nodes that you can see here in red and green, these combine the functionality of a lot of other nodes into just two nodes. So again, this makes things very simple. At the end of the video here, I want to give you a simple explanation of this workflow that I built for you. I will also include the second workflow. This has this model switching in it and I will talk a little bit about how that works too. So let's get started with this here and with the overall idea of that UI. So when you want to add new nodes to that, basically what you do is you double click on the empty background and you can see here that you have a search function with that you can type just anything for example VAE and this will show you every note that has VAE in the title so you can simply select it from there so finding these notes is very easy there is also an alternative way where you right click you have here add note and there you have the different categories and packs of notes from which you can choose now let's talk about the notes that I'm using here and how they work. You can see in this note, you can load the checkpoint, in this case, ref animated, the VAE, you can adjust the clip skip. This is working negative, not positive. So if you have a clip skip of two, don't set it to two, set it to minus two. You can also add a LoRa here, I'm not using one. You have the positive and the negative prompt. Down here you have the resolution of the image and also the batch size of how many images you want to render. So as you can see, all of that is super simple. Another thing you can see here is that they are connected by cables to the next node and they are also color coded and they also have a text here. So of course model goes to model and then conditioning plus, which means the positive prompt goes into positive, conditioning minus goes into negative, latent goes into latent image. It's basically the resolution that you're using in this specific case. And also the VAE goes into the VAE, which is optional here, but we are still using it. Next, we're going to talk about the case sampler, which is the render settings inside of automatic 1111. So here you have the sampler state. Don't worry about that. In this case, it's just sampling. You have here the seed. You can click down here to switch between minus one, which is a random seed or the last seed that has been used to generate the image. Then you have the amount of steps, CFG scale, the sampler name, which you have a list here that you can choose from, and then the scheduler. Now the scheduler is not a thing you can choose inside of automatic 1111, but for example, you certainly have heard about, for example, using DPM++ SDE with a scheduler of Keras. Now here in ConfUI, you can select them individually 
individually experiment with them and then of course gives you a lot more choice about the different sampling methods if you want to but if you want to keep it easy keep this one for the scheduler or normal and for the sampler simply use Euler ancestral that often works very well with most of the models down here you have a denoise setting this is if you use an image input over here for the latent image but usually if you go text to image you just keep this as value one the preview method is auto so you can see a little video down here every time i click on render that gives me a preview of the complete render process and then also vae decode is set to true don't worry about that either. Next, we have here the ultimate SD upscale. You might know that from a script inside of Automatic 11.11. Here's a video where you can check that out if you want to. And here you can see that I'm upscaling it by two. I'm using a seat number here. This is also randomized again, as you can see down here, but you can also say fixed increment decrement, which means increment is counting up, decrement is counting down. So we leave that at randomized. You have here the steps you want to use for the upscaling, the CFG scale, the sampler name. In this case, I'm using DMP++ 2S Ancestral Scheduler Keras denoising 0.25 which means how different it is from the input image 0.25 is usually a good value for the upscaling and then the rest below that you don't really need to pay too much attention to one thing you might change here is that the tile width i have set to 768 but you probably want to use in both of these values 512 which is used for the sd 1.5 models and then if you're going to do upscale for the sd XL models what you want to do is to use here 1024 by 1024 all of the other settings below that you can completely ignore these are expert settings don't pay attention to them at all and then this is rendering here as tiles they are combined automatically afterwards into a high resolution image and then as a last step what I'm doing here is to sharpen the image so it's just a slight sharpening with a radius of 1 sigma 0 0.5 and alpha 0 0.5 three you can either use that if you want to or you can right click on that and say bypass from that menu and then this will have this kind of violet overlay which means it's not going to be used you can do the same thing up here right click and bypass and like that you will only be rendering the original image in the small resolution of 512 by 768 without any upscaling without any sharpening this will save on gpu time until you find something you like and then you can simply put the and then you can simply put the seat up here so this is not rendered again but the upscaling is happening for you in the next queue if you want to activate these two nodes again right click and click on bypass again this will activate it and the same thing down here one more thing to point out here is that the upscale model is loaded up here and last but not least let's talk a little bit about how to actually start the render process so here on the right side you can see this area which has different functions you see here q prompt this is the same thing as the generate button inside of automatic 1111 you can also see here that you have extra options if you click that this will give you a batch count where you can render multiple images at the same time by clicking on the Q prompt below that you also have save and load this does not save and load the image this loads and saves the workflow that we have here if you want to save the image simply right click on the image and here you have save image if you click on open image it's going to open up in a new tab now let's have a quick look see at my second build this is basically doing the exact same thing the only difference here is i have a second case sampler and for that we're gonna load a second checkpoint so here you can see this is for the second case sampler and here we're going to use epic realism of course you can use any kind of model you want to use everything else in this build is exactly the same as i showed you before and that's how easy that is now of course if you want to have more complex things like a detailer or control net i did not include that in my basic build just so you have something that is super easy to get started into let me know in the comment if you want to see more complex workflows that also include control net a detailer and a lot of other cool things that you can use leave a like if you enjoyed this video thank you very much much for watching and see you soon bye 
Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.